Today, the likes of four-time indoor champion Tom Martin, as well as last year's event winner Fred Wilhite, will be locked in slingshot duels for fast ETs. It lasts a mere two seconds, but so much ride with each lightning quick pass. Concerns about safety, equipment, your pocketbook. But for two seconds, those thoughts must be put aside because reputations are also on the line. And one must travel light when your shot at glory only lasts two seconds. This is Brooks and Tractor Power featuring the best in NMRO mud racing. Today, it's the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Spring Nationals from the Allen County Fairgrounds here in Lima, Ohio. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the National Network. When spring is in the air, it means new iron in the pit area, including last year's winter. And here with that story is Army Armstrong. Gary, last year's Class 5 winner, Fred Wilhite, rolled back into the pit area with a vehicle that looks the same, but the word on the street is this is a brand new ride. As a matter of fact, the word we get, the motor's only been run about 30 seconds, and the car's never been down the track. It hasn't even been muddy yet. We moved her around in the parking lot a little bit, and that's all she's done under her own power. Let me ask you this. You've got a reputation for driving, kind of the wild man out there. You're going to make the first run. What kind of run will it be? Full kill, or are you going to lay back and try to see how it runs, or what? Uh, cut a good light, and I'll let off at the end. Gary, I think if you look at his helmet, that kind of explains it all, though. No brain, no pain. Back to you, Gary. We'll just call him my favorite Martian. Well, the pit has been dug on what's normally a pulling track, so there's a hard clay bottom. Now, several classes have already run, so the track is really overworked. As we take a look at Gary Osteen, driver of the Dirty Bird, getting ready for his run, he's also in some new equipment. Earlier, Army asked him about it. Gary Olsen out of Daytona Beach, Florida, has always danced to a little bit different drummer. What I mean is, he runs a supercharged Ford engine, and everybody thinks he's kind of strange for that with the Dirty Bird vehicle, but really, you're still developing the Ford engine. Last year, aluminum heads. This year, I understand a complete aluminum block assembly. Yes, we went and bit the bullet and cost us a lot of money, but we finally got up enough money to gather up and get us an aluminum block. It's made by Alan Rude out of California. Uh, it's supposed to put out a little bit more horsepower, and I hope it really does. We're still trying to get the bugs out of it, and hopefully we can do that today. Our first matchup will find Tom Martin in the Mud Patrol and Mike Yosha in a hyperactive, a pair of fiberglass Vicky bodies. Now, Yosha, the hyperactive vehicle out of Indianapolis, Indiana, is actually the old Tom Martin vehicle. So he's driving a vehicle that he knows will be a runner. Tom Martin himself out of Portage, Indiana, steps up with a brand new concept, move the engine a little bit forward, trying to get a little bit better balance. But what we're going to see here, no matter what, one well of a mud race, I'll guarantee you that. Tom Martin, the near lane, Mike Yosha, the far lane. It's only going to take two seconds. The first two in the pits, the track is good. It should be a real quick track because it's smooth. Oh, Yosha put the big guy on the trailer. Look here, Yosha, two, two second point eight two. A 3.24, 282 for Mike Yosha. I bet Martin wishes he hadn't sold it to him now. <laughs> wow, that Yosha, Yosha's always been a player. He just stepped up and has got some real good equipment now, and this proves that he can run with anybody. Well, he got on top of the mud and laid down a great shot. Let's go down trackside and visit with Mike Yosha. Well, you bought a vehicle from another guy and just beat him up with it with a good time, a 2.8. That was a good run. Well, I think the track conditions out there are great, and I think the day's great for racing, and uh, I'm just glad to be here. Let me ask you something. Is the track going to get first guy out of the box? Is that track going to get better, or is it going to go away? Normally, uh, the track is better first out, but you never can tell. You just got to wait and see. And Army, we understand that Martin lost the blower belt on his car. As we take a look at Gary Osteen, we'll see what that new aluminum power plant can develop in the way of horsepower. He'll be taking on a guy from just down to I-75 from here, Chad Miller from Vandalia, Ohio, in Instant T. Miller runs a 509 cubic inch all-aluminum supercharged engine. Sounds like a handful, and it is. It's a 27 roadster body. Meanwhile, the Florida-based flyer, Osteen, closer to the camera, all-aluminum Ford engine. Man, Osteen has a problem. Miller goes through. Let's check the time for Miller, see if he can now uh, 3.382. That's quick, but not nearly fast enough at that 283 turned in earlier by Mike Yosha. And the uh, Dirty Bird 
did not finish. Boy, it's a long way from Florida just to not go any further than that. Well, there's another look at the Dirty Bird breaking in uh, mid lane, and we'll come back with more from Lima, Ohio. Welcome back to Lima, Ohio, where Ford Trucks present the four-wheel Jamboree Spring Nationals, part of the special events performance series. Coming up next, Al Ash, a man we've seen win a few races in Bloomsburg with that 412 cubic inch Rodeck and a three-speed Linko, and he will go up against Glenn Stiebel. There's a look at Al Ash out of Intercourse, Pennsylvania in Beefy Blue. And Glenn Seabolt out of Georgia in legal speed. Glenn Seabolt's one of these guys. These two guys remind you of Happy the Clown. Both of them have a real good personality. They just like to go fast. They're fun guys to be around. Yeah, you're exactly right. But when that lineup right now is real serious. Boy, yeah, it's looked good in that far lane. Oh, he laid down a great run. Let's check the time. 283 is the one we're looking to beat at 283.6. <laughs> 283.6, the other was a 283.2. So that puts him second on the leaderboard. Glenn Seabolt, a 317. Gary, the track conditions are not allowing these guys to weasel or porpoise. They're able to get a good straight shot out of this thing. Al Ash lays down a good run. He's with Army. A 283.6, that makes you second quick. A 283.2 is quick, but you did it out of the left lane, and you look like you had it figured out. Well, the guy before me was slow, and he went pretty straight. I think that helped me a little bit. I shifted early. Uh, I didn't want to do that, but it, it, I think it helped me to hook up. They pulled the motor down, then it hooked up and took off. And I hope it helped me. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it holds. Coming up next, Dan Trimble. He's an auto shop teacher from Jeffersonville, Kentucky. And Bill's rat, he takes on Jeff Ballard in the Pork Brothers Express, also out of Kentucky. You know, these guys out of the Bluegrass State could have stayed home and run against each other, but they're up here chasing a national championship. I'd like to have a school teacher that did this on a weekend. That'd be fun. Yeah, Mr. He could have a pit crew of all students. Have his own cheerleading squad? That's right. Right now, Bauer was in yeah. trouble immediately. Trimble gets through, slides to a side, Whoa, and rolls over. over. Mr. Trimble. Well, that's an example of what not to do when you get out of the pit in the shutdown area. And we do have a situation here we've got to be aware of the, the fuel cell starting to leak in the front of the vehicle the driver's coming out safety crews are out everything's okay both drivers are out the crowd responds there's trimble he's okay but they were going to throw some water i think on that alcohol to neutralize the alcohol yep. now watch again he gets in trouble at a very slow part he's actually almost to a stop yeah he's, he's actually trying to back pedal shuts it down and this is what you call high side get crossed up and it just rolls on over Nice, easy rollover, and probably minimal damage of any damage to the, to the vehicle. That's easy for you and I to say, because we're sitting up here. In the <laughs> it's not our, it's not our paycheck is going to fix yeah. it. Yeah. You want to flip it? Can we flip her? Well, I tell you what, for a school teacher, I'm glad you don't teach driver ed. Are you okay? I'm in fine shape. It's easy rollover. It uh, got a little left. I knew it was left, and I should have let it roll, but I got on the brakes a little more than I should. What exactly caused it? I hooked a little rut right in the middle, and it came hard to the, well, really to the right, left from where we're at here, but it came hard to the right, felt like. And when I come through the lights, you can see my tracks. They just came out here. And I got on the binders too hard and should let it roll out. They have plenty of room. Inexperienced, not enough. No, we're glad you're okay. Thank you. Well, it's always nice to have a driver say, I made a mistake. Here's uh, Jeff Ballard. He had some problems in that near lane. I think he could have broken an axle at the left front or the right front because what happened, the vehicle came out and immediately made a hard left turn. So, boy, a lot of action all over already. And we're seeing more and more of this type of action each week we go out with these mud racers. This is a good show. Army, let's take a look at a wild run from earlier in the competition. Mark House in the near lane and Pure Hell taking on Matt Hospenthal in the far lane. And watch Hospenthal right at the finish line. Knocks over the timing light, so he was DQ'd. Well, he goes out of the program, but in the other lane, Pure Hell, a 309. That's a good number for Mark House. And back at the starting line, notice, notice the antenna coming up out of the cockpit. This is the man who won this event last year, Fred Wilhite. He has a brand new car, the new money pit, because he completely destroyed his old car in a wild, spectacular wreck indoors. Yeah, but he'll be going up against the guy in a vehicle that goes by the name of Tickle Pink. It'll be Ron Graff out of Michigan. 
Graf being the lane closest to it. Will Hyde furthest away. A lot of people watching Will Hyde because he was a winner last year, but he's watch they're watching the lane he's running in because that lane has been coming to and going away from these guys all day long. A whole lot of the lane condition. Boom, we blow it on the starting line. Will Hyde goes out the end. Gary, what kind of time did he turn? Lays down a good run, not fast enough to take the top of the leaderboard. He's now third. And there is a look at Tickled Pink. He banged a blower, lifted the supercharger, but the safety strap held the supercharger in place so he'll be able to put it back together. Take a look one more time at this run. The far lane, Fred Wilhite. Notice the balls, the antennae coming out of the helmet. I like that. Here's Fred with Army. All right, Gary, it's time to beam me up, Scotty. A 295 puts you third, Fred. That's not bad in a lane that has really looked rough out there today. Yeah, it's the car's got potential. Like I say, that's the first pass it's ever made. So if, if I can get a run as good as my old car, we, we got a lot of potential here. Tell me about that lane. You had a flip out of the lane, a lot of guys backpedaled in it, but you went straight. Uh, you know, is the car so new you can't tell me why or why, why did you go straight? Uh, actually, the, the ride height and the suspension, everything was identical to the other car, and it was a straight goer. Yeah, I had no problems doing it. I just uh, hit a few things on my indoor circuit and kind of destroyed my chassis. More mudslinging coming your way from Lima, Ohio. And Gary Lee back at the Allen County Fairgrounds here in Lima, Ohio. As our competition continues, we look at the leaderboard. Mike Yosha stands on top. Al Ash second. Then it's Fred Wilhite, Mark House, and Brian Harold. Well, of course, the track is really beating up these drivers. We'll show you what we mean by taking a look at some highlights from earlier in the competition. An uncharacteristically slow pass for Tom Means, who told us his problem may be too much motor. The motor's running so much better this year, and uh, it just we're going to have to back the motor down a little bit, because it just roasted the tires all the way. Ron Smith, a Class 5 Jamboree winner in Indianapolis, taking on Brian Harold, and it would be the Surf Rat moving into the number 5 spot with a 3.153 blast. This kid, Brian Harold, has got a future in this sport. He's working his way up, and we're really starting to lay down some good numbers, Gary. Shane back, attitude adjuster, and he would have a rough time in the near lane. Uh, he starts to porpoise, bounce up and down, and it caught up with him, Gary. Well, and after this run, you had a chance to talk to Shane back. The starting line's awful slick, and uh, we just got the wrong setup on the clutch right now for the line, and it's awful ready, and I'm trying to run these big front tires, and it just jerked the steering wheel plumb out of my hand. Could not hold it. Well, similar problems would plague Tom Marsh in the intruder, taking on Dan Fuchs and living on the edge, but it would be Marsh pulling it out of the fire. Now, this is earlier in competition here in Lima, Ohio. Good side-by-side -side run, but Marsh literally wheels up, whoa, and then has to backpedal when he gets through the finish line. He actually powered up on the rear wheel, did a wheelie, if you will, out the pit, Gary. Well, that was a scary situation for just a moment. Now, watch the right lane as he comes into the shutdown area. He's in trouble right there as he crosses the line, and he had a chance to talk to Army. This is a new motor, and I really didn't know what to expect. And uh, I let her wind, and I shifted it, and it really didn't carry it very well. It hooked up there towards the end, but I uh, really wasn't very happy with the track or the way the car ran. Well, back to action now. Back to the starting line. Dan Brown, the new driver of the Mind Games, taking over the uh, chores from Mike Hickerson. He'll be taking on Dan Fuchs in Turtles Toys. Brown in the Ultra 23 Power Pro chassis with a 600 cubic inch blowing Pontiac engine. This Mind Game setup with Brown doing the driving could be the future of the sport. A lot of guys are starting to put together their resources, and this is what we're getting out of it. Good point times and good quality equipment. Good time, look at that, at 2.763, 2763, and that is the quick run here this afternoon. Take a look again. Look at the lane he came out of, too. This has to be a perfect run, and he still powers them up, Gary. Oh, that's an exciting run, and here's Dan. Let's call him Get Down Brown. What can we say, a 273, 2763 is what I get. Yeah, it was a pretty rough ride, Army, down on that top end. It felt like I was going over the wall, but if I got out of it, it had been too late. So just stand in it, and it got a little squirrely in the shutdown, but just stood back on it, straightened right back out. Back on the starting line, it's Tony Farrell, the Blue Ribbon Bandit, taking on Steve Sparks in Wild Thing. It's been Farrell who's shown us some wild things in the past, the Spring Nationals, in his 23 Alter T. Once again, a very lazy rollover. Then it looked like he tagged the throttle. Man, this is awesome. This is weird the way it's happened. These guys can't figure this line of track out or even the shutdown area. 
Well, that's why the roll cage, you can see the driver is okay, hanging upside down, securely fastened inside the cockpit, and the roll cage keeps the weight of the, the vehicle off the driver. Now, look again in the near lane. Yeah, the vehicle comes out of the pit. Okay, he's out of the pit right now. Now he starts to backpedal. It gets a little bit crossed up, and here we go, the high side I talked about, but right now he hits the throttle. Watch this. He just wings it right yeah. there. But once again, Tony Farrell is okay. The emergency crew there as we take one more look now in that left lane coming right at you. He's in trouble right off the start. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, like you say, you only got two seconds to play this game. You don't have time to, to rethink it. You just got to go. It looked to me like he tried to pull it out like when you high side a monster truck, you stay on the throttle. That's what he did. Let's go down and check in, Army. Here we go. Well, Gary, as you can see, the safety crews were jotting on the spot. They talked to the driver. He said, I'm okay. George Carpenter and the crew decided just to immediately go ahead and write the vehicle back up. Ironically, on the back of the car, it says this end up. He didn't follow his own directions here. Real quick, you gonna be okay? Oh, yeah, we'll go back. We're gonna get ready for tomorrow. What caused it to let go like that? I started getting a little sideways. I knew I was got road track. Started to stab it and pull myself out of it, and it just didn't work. We'll let you go see the EMTs. I'm glad you're all right. Thanks. As we had surmised with the four-wheel drive vehicle, he tried to pull it back out by nailing the throttle. As he said, simply did not work, but he is okay. A good crowd on hand. Remember, Tony was the one that drove out of his rear wheels here one year ago. But he's okay, and we'll come back with more action from Lyme, Ohio. More Class 5 highlights now from the Allen County Fairgrounds here in Lima, Ohio, as we take a look at the chemical reaction. This is Mike Behrman. Behrman Brothers are involved in the agricultural industry. They like to run real strong, pick the right lane. They had a relatively good run with a 3.050 time, not in that two-second bracket. Here's Craig Jones against Bob Munn. Again, the right lane looked to be the place to be. Like he has a little suspension problem there on that right front corner. Yeah, he broke an axle is what happened there and collapsed the front end. Now, this guy here, Mad Max, Mike Thomas, a gentleman that makes a lot of horsepower. Look at the rear wheels. He literally blew the tires off the rear end of the car. That is some horsepower. Now it's uh, Ron Pence and Bob Heisner. Ron Pence, of course, a regular in the uh, Tater Mud Racer. And he lays down a good run in that left lane. Eisner's was a 3.220. And uh, Ron Pence was a 3.390. What's starting to happen as we get into the last couple of shots is the starting line seems to really be getting hard. The very first of the show, you talk about Jeremy Finley running that right lane, which is on top of an old pulling track. Well, he and Al Stebbins draw at the bottom of this field and the starting line does not look that good. The mud's one thing, but you got to get going first, and the starting line is just basically hard packed right now. So once again, the luck of the draw plays a major role in this type of competition. Your leader, watching to see if anybody can get to him. This is the last two, but either one of these guys can, and they've had all day long to try to figure the track out. Did they figure it out? Whoa, no, we got a number. It doesn't look to be quick enough, though, at 2.775, ever so close. That would be good for second, but Jeremy Finley well off at a 3.2. So Dan Brown takes the win at 2.76. Al, seven second, 2.77. That's Mike Yosha, Al Aish, and Fred Wilhite. Here's your winner. Well, Gary, 50 vehicles made the call today. The winner standing with me comes out of the middle of the field, and I think everybody kind of had to use their brain out there today. Uh, Dan, Mike put a good car under it, but both you guys had to sit and think about this to get that right combination, didn't you? Yeah, Mike was up the line watching them cars take off, and he's seen everybody just blowing their tires away, and we decided to go to the left side of the line, just get one wheel width over out of them ruts and shoot for Caddy Corner to cross the pit. We got about three quarters of the way down there, and I was hit. I was, I was going to get the lights. I backpedaled a little bit, and that's when the front end come back up. And we was talking a little bit ago. I think we tripped the lights with the back tires. Well, that would be an impressive run if you tripped the lights with the back tires. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video released from Diamond Peace Sports.